you are praying also along, please go ahead. Because one of the things that I did while praying today for this meeting is that God will help every marriage here because I know that whoever is here, it's, it's a matter of destiny. And I said that uh, every destiny here today will fill God's agenda for their lives and maritally the Lord will fulfill his mandate in the name of Jesus. I'm here teaching about marriage. <laughs> but my parents, they were once separated. So what qualifies me is not maybe because I'm from a nuclear family. Right? Husband, wife, children. I've seen people, even when they want to marry, they just say, ah, marry from a nuclear family. What qualifies me to be able to do this is because of what I went through. And I was able to ask a lot of questions and how God was able to help me by the special grace of God to even reconcile my parents. And before I did that, I, I'm actually number five. As I said then, the last born of my father and my mother. So when they separated, I was in primary two. We usually would stay with my mom here in Lagos. I was born in Okira, for some of you. Just there. Or should I say, it's not Ikoyi, it's Okira. <laughs> and... Um, my dad used to work in another state. So he said, let's move to my hometown. And my mom said, no, I'm not going. And she didn't go. But my dad said, he's not going to leave his children. So he packed all of us. So we, and at some point my mom came. He begged and begged and begged and begged and begged, pleaded. Even when he called the children, we all knelt and we were all crying. We cried. My mom too cried. She still stood up and she left. I'm like, ha. <laughs> Some people can be crying and they'll see what they want to do. My dear, cry is not. <laughs> Weeping, crying, kneeling, rolling on the floor. If I prostration, sorry, <laughs> to prostrate. And doing all that is not really a change of as it I have accepted your plea or anything. People can still do that, but they know what they want to do. That, that I looked, it looks so much like manipulation. For the first time, I realized that. In fact, I concluded, <laughs> you know, that no matter if you, if I beg me, I'm not, if I at that point in time, it helped me not to make decisions emotionally. Though it was something tough, but I realized that if you want to make a decision, make a decision. It's not, not emotions. And she left. Ha. My dad even said, if you are going, don't come back. This is how she She left. Ha. With all this strength, you still leave. No, five children. If you want to leave these children, no, all the plea, all the. She left. And um, I would usually fall sick because I was usually with her. And I think the bond and all. But over time, I got used to my dad. And, you know, they called me that is bed, daddy's baby, you even do, ah, hey, dad, you even do thumbs up, that kind of thing, and you have the way my sweet daughter and her father, and I just look like, okay, my worry, <laughs> we are here, I'm not jealous, I've enjoyed this, I've enjoyed this before, all right, and I lived through that, by the time I was in year five, one time one of my friends just said, ha, ah, you are always saying your daddy, your daddy. You never even say my mommy because some of them they say my daddy did this, my mom did this, my mom. They were always saying my mom. Means when I want to contribute to the discussion, you know we have discussion now. I'll say my daddy, my daddy. Why you are always your daddy, your daddy? Where is your mommy? Ah, as I started, I I was those words really got to me, and I told my dad, I, if my mother is not going to come, I think you better remarry. So at least I will have. My mommy. So that conclusion sounded like something selfish. And my dad really believed me. We were so close that anything I say, he believed that I'm talking from God. 
me that I'm still a baby, I don't even know. So he followed suit and he got married. In fact, he even asked me, who should he marry? Yes, out of his girlfriend's then. No. <laughs> said, who do you like the most? In the evening, he would take me out, and they, they would buy biscuits, some they would give me money. <laughs> you know, potential husband thing now. The mother don't go. This one is not coming back. So this is a clear position. And so they were trying to place themselves, but strategically. Unfortunately, some of them that really took care of me, and I had, they can cook very good the love price. I did not choose them. <laughs> I ended up choosing someone else. And she said, oh, really, you like her? I said, yes. You know she's of another faith. I said, yes, I like her. She's a Muslim. I will even go to the house. Her dad was more like a preacher, a solid preacher, enthroned preacher in Nikiti State then. So they even have mosques. And I will follow them to their mosque. As they are doing their lola, I'm doing their lola. <laughs> you know, she, she really felt the love and she just gave in. She married my dad. And so we are, there are two beautiful, I have two beautiful young, younger ones from her, a boy and a girl. And they are doing wonderfully well. One has been here a couple of times, even sometimes with her husband. Such beautiful gift. But before that reconciliation, so we, had, we grew up like that, and for over 10 years, I didn't see my mother. So something happened over the 10 years. I grew up to hate her. And I didn't know until the day I set my eyes on her. And funny enough, by the time I would go, it was my dad. I said, I think you have come of age to at least see your mom. I'm like, no, I don't want to see her. No, you should see her. She's a mother. Like, ma, you, you know, she now. She, and I'm, for me, I was siding my father now, you know, do you understand and all of that? And said, no, you should. And by the time I saw her, I just couldn't hug her. I couldn't do anything. I was, I was just looking. She was so happy. Ah. And I'm like, oh. I just stood. It was then I knew that I had grown to hate her and I didn't know. But in the process, I had been a, a member of um, Girls' Brigade. Um, so sometimes we hear the word of God, right? And sometimes I'll be even be called, I'll be called to teach some of my peers and all of that. I'll pick a word in the Bible, we'll talk, we'll do this, we'll do that. So one of our leaders, when he called, he called me, he said, how are you? How are you at my day? I just started, I busted in tears. I just started crying. She said, what do you want? I said, I don't even know. So just keep praying about it. I got admission into school. And luckily, I became a member of Springs of Life Fellowship, Campus Outreach of the Fountain of Life Church, Ogbomosho. And our pastor then, one day, he just started teaching about relationship and about love and about how then I started having a different perspective to what love really is. And that you don't necessarily have to hate those who have despitefully used you or if they have actually hated you. Do you understand? Or if they've um, behaved in a very harsh way to you. I said, okay. Then I realized that, yeah, I see, I see all these women, Sha. Though, when I gain admission, I will go to her. Sometimes she will give me money. I will collect the money. So the fact that people collect money from you does not mean they don't hate you. Does not mean they love you. Do you understand? Does not mean you've not hurt them. Let me put that word. Not hate now. Do you get it? Does not mean... They will just collect this for It's a responsibility. JB, you went away for over 10 years, no? Just do your part and all of that. And I called my siblings when I realized that it's a ministry of reconciliation. I had forgiven her. I had asked her different questions. What actually happened? She explained certain things. So beyond the one of, we are just moving, you are not staying, there were the in-law part. Do you understand? Are you getting me now? There was this in-law part. There was this uh, gap part, separation, different things, misunderstanding part, different things. Then the past of what has actually happened, even when they were married. Do you understand that she had tried to endure, 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 unresolved? So there were a lot of things, a lot of baggage. So at that time, it was like, no, I can't, I can't be Larry or Tani or Marshall. For the rest of my no, this is not going to happen. So I asked her, she explained. I went to my dad. I asked him, he too said his own side of his story. So I picked some of my siblings. Oh, how about that and mom? I realized that like two of them never really hated her. But one never really, in fact, not even could see, could see flash of love. 
You know, sometimes somebody will call you, flash, you flash. She, you know, that's much. There was nothing like that. So I had to start. Each of them, I just had that relationship. We, sometimes we just talk, we just, and I realized, okay, we're good to go. And I started that reconciliation process. But what that really afforded me in my reconciliation process is that I'm able to be exposed to what marriage really is and God's agenda for it. They reconciled. Yes, I have stepmother, but my mom would still come confidently to the house. That is what I was able to do. With love. They would give each other money. Do you understand? It was just, there was that reconciliation. And my dad had, is going to glory now. But I'm glad I was able to do that. Let's look at the story of Adam and Eve. I'm sharing this with you to let you know that regardless of what you're going through, or maybe you're a product of this, you're a product of my parents, my this, my that, is not the reason for you to replicate what you have been through. Are you listening to me? I am a living testimony. People have gone ahead of me. They, I'm sure if they might have similar testimonies. They've joined cloud of witnesses. So by the time you say, hey, God, it's because my parents you say, oh, rah, rah. In our own case, it happened, and then we're able to do it well. Amen? So you will do your own marriage well. Do you get it? So let's look at the story of Adam and Eve. I love the beginning. Let's go there. He said, male and female created Eden. And then let's look at chapter 3, at what really happened when they disobeyed God. In marriage, sometimes there might be a lot of disobedience. And that disobedience is not even to you, it's to God. And you will be hurt by it. Your spouse, your husband, your wife will do the same. And why would they do that? Because they have been uh, a product of other people's influences that they did not heal from. Are you with me? Like I said, when I said, oh, I was able to, you know, do certain things and I had to go through what... It's called mindset re-engineering. Like a total phase of changing things. My knowledge about marriage, my knowledge about life changed when God opened my heart to it. And he used Adam and Eve, and I'm going to do that today. And same thing is affecting sex as well. Imagine you watch porn and you see a lot of actions that they do and then you get married, you expect your wife or your husband to act that way. You forgot that they were acting scripts. You forgot that they were under the influence of drug. You forgot that they were doing it based on what they think it should be. And you forgot that the devil must have manipulated it. And you end up wanting to put yourself in that kind of position. Why? You are watching it and so you become it. So what you keep seeing, what you keep looking at is what you keep becoming. And because we keep seeing... Marriages with default, um, with, with uh, problems, with issues and all of that, we want to pattern our own marriage in that unconsciously. So you must have an ideal marriage that must be a template for you to follow. Adam and Eve got married. And Adam, Adam said, wow, um, see fine girl. Like these days, they like uh, figure eight. Somebody woke up and said figure eight is the best figure. Do you understand? Do you even know? And you want to kill yourself to become that figure eight. And the man is looking for figure eight. You, are you six pack? You don't have what you are, you, you don't have something. Not, at least I don't have it. Let me look for the one that you are comfortable with your own state of imperfection. In your own mind, you think you are not perfect, right? You are coming with a state of imperfection and you want to marry someone who is perfect. Could they walk now? That's what we tend to always look out for. So that became a template. But rather look at Adam and Eve. It's, it's, ah, ah. We don't, the Bible did not record that she was figure eight. So if it did not record that she was figure eight, the Bible said male and female. As long as it's a female, marry. You, do you hear me? Yes. And don't marry her and then say, go and do tummy talk. 
If the tummy is big, be rubbing it like that. Say, I love it. Do like this. <laughs> and if it's your husband's own that all the six pack is packed into one, rub it. Enjoy it. Eat your pounded yam. Eat healthy. Do your exercise as you're jumping. Everything is doing double double. Do ah, baby, see you. I need to say ah, ah, honey, yoga. We are here together. Enjoy it. Because the goal of that exercise is that you want to be healthy, not that you want to form a shape in your head. Do you understand? Because some people will say, by the time you do everything, then, ah, the tummy is not. You know, ah, yo, waist, uh, waist is not snatching. I've snatched, snatched, this waist is not snatching. And then you go that length. So then frustration will come. You start passing aggression based on stature. Why, are, are, with all the things I've done, who, I need someone to do increase in height. Height, I mean, they are doing the how? Ah, eh? They will cut your bone. You can imagine what the devil is doing to minds. And the Bible records that everything that God created was what? Good and perfect. Even God himself, he saw it and he said, it was good. It is good. It's continuous. It is good. God the ultimate, the reason why you are here. Who you knew you when your mother's on pay apple shape move for more. And by the time you got here, you are you appeared apple shape, and you're like, ah, it's like uh, our glass is the rainy thing. No, but, ah, you now went to do all the buckets, <laughs> you added, you do, you pump it. And you will be told that you should boost your confidence. And you are praying. Talongba dry. She. She toy in Isha. Toy is a full shape. When the toy become our glass, you created yourself based on people's knowledge. No one can tell you what life is except God who gave you that life. No one. Even marriage. A lot of principles. I'm sure you've said some principles that did not work. Because it is his template. It, marriage is his own idea in the first place. So he expects you to do what? Ask him, Father, how do I do this? Even when it comes to sex, have you ever asked yourself, Genesis chapter 4 verse 1, said that Adam knew his wife. Do you think they watched porn? Before he knew how to knew, know his wife. I mean, what's that? He was talking about sex. He was talking about, right, that intimate moment that they had intercourse. Said that Eve was so happy. Look at, and, 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 and now, now it's still happening. People are knowing their wife. We cannot have children if there is no knowing. So my husband knew me, you know. <laughs> Said, now Adam knew Eve is wife. Stop knowing different women before you get married. You have, you have known a lot of them that you are confused. By the time it's, it's time for you to know your wife. You begin to have different images in your head. You have disturbed your life yourself. You have, you have, you have, you have not helped your mind. You say, oh God, help my mind, though. You will be going, you will see almost them half naked. You have, you did, and this is the way people dress. They don't help your imagination again. You don't need to imagine before you see it. They leave everything to no imagination. Imagination is a fair job. Leave some for me. Let people even imagine. Stop knowing. Know only your husband. Say, know only your husband. Singles, know only your husbands. Uh, do like this. Male and female, do this. Thank you. Oh, yeah, everybody. Uh, 
then you close your lap. When I, all of us, we are closing our lap. Oh, how many people who have sex doing this? Eh. Yeah. Uh, premarital sex, so no. Sex in marriage, beautiful, beautiful. Direct, I could see you. I can see you. So then she conceived and bought Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. She did not even say, my husband, you did not give me a uh, uh, child. No, because she knew. So sex is even God's idea. Childbearing is God's what? Idea. But before they got to children, to having children, something happened. They were in the garden. Adam was about the business. Eve was about his business. And the devil came. Everybody say the devil came. Say it again. The devil came. It will still keep coming. I hope you know. We need to tell it. I rebuke the devil. It will still come. He said, boy, keep resisting him. Even Jesus Christ, he tempted, he said, and he left you for a while, for a season. He would still come back. He tested him through Peter. He tested when he wanted to make him king. He te- Do you understand? He tested when he wanted, wanted to push him off the cliff. Hey, rah, rah, I'm not dying by the cliff. He tempted him. Even when they brought him before Pilate, he tempted him. Till the point of death, he tempted him. But he didn't give in. And they were there. After the old logic, I'm sure a lot of us read that story. Now the serpent was more cunning, more than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God in this said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And God told them that. So there are some questions that you don't have to answer. You should be sensitive enough to know that the devil is coming here. Sometimes the problem you are going through is, say, are you going through this? You scroll through your social media and it's going, and then they want to give you answer, profile solutions. Some answers are not what. See, problem is still off it. It's still off. I can't give for look at this jacket. You have to slim fit it. Yes or no? Whatever you are going through is personal fit. Amen. Said, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? You die. Let's go. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Look at what God said. He just said you will not. As if he knew. Do you understand? Let's go. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Knowledge is important. If I ask you why you are paying for any course or any tuition that you are in right now, why? Why? So we still gravitate towards knowledge, but you must know the knowledge you embrace. So that is why the fruit of knowledge was so good to Eve. You know, some of us say, ah, we'll not be here if not for Adam and Eve. Some people say that you're just feeling heat. You know, ah, Adam and Eve don't cost them before they walk around naked now. As a matter of fact, you won't even know you are naked. Do you understand? You can see the opening of what that is. So certain hurts that probably we're going through, certain things that we are going through, by the time you are thinking about it, let something be your litmus test, the word of God. Are you with me? Say, ah, is your husband satisfying you in bed? Is your wife satisfying you in bed? And then you begin to imagine what satisfaction means. And explain to me what is satisfaction. Then you borrow that person's satisfaction. I don't understand how we tend to make somebody else's life explanation of their own life from their own private mind. Because that knowledge has been polluted. But we embrace it. And we think that is the definition. Some people will come after me with this teaching. Especially sex coaches. Amen. Amen. There is a way to enjoy your life. Enjoy your marriage with freedom. Let's go. I will just end up from there. All right. 
So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. Said it was desirable to make one wise. She had not eaten it. But because of what the devil said, she immediately picked up what? Please, I need the glasses. Look at me, I can see well. God created me, I'm representing Adam and Eve. Are you listening? I'm going to end with this, so we continue next week. God created me well, I could see well. And he said, oh, there's a particular food, if you eat it, it's going to uh, uh, probably work on your vision. Do you understand? Change something, and okay. And then she came and said, ah, this, I said, wow, this frame. She said, oh, look at this, please tell me, market this. Please, do we need my proposal that we can hear it? I want people online to enjoy it as well. Let's go. Okay, this is a recommended glasses. It helps me to see clearly. Um, it has leather frame now. I yes, it, <laughs> it has a brown leather, um, yeah, a leather frame. And... Um, it helps you to see very well. See that word helps her to see very well. I will immediately think, she has eyes, I have eyes. If she's adding this, that means she's seeing more than I can see. I hope you know. That is how we borrow knowledge. That is how we borrow the things, the problem that we don't have. Then I want to see through her glasses. And me, I know I've been to the optician. I have 20-20 vision. If my husband will ask you, how can you see from there? How can you read that thing? The other day, it was something that was typed, and they pasted it on the gate. My husband said, I should read from there. I, I, my man was like, okay. You, you have to trust me. He was using glasses, no see. For me, that I'm not using glasses. I could read from afar. And I read it. I said, ah, I would derive it, you know. So I would borrow her glasses. That's what she just did. So I was like, ah, ah, wow, it could make me see. Are you serious? Then better. Then I don't, oh, more. <laughs> hey, my eyes is bringing out water already. One thing I've not, hey, hey. Ah. <laughs> You guys are trying, no? Amen. I was able to put it away, but some people would take it there that I think this is what it means. Sorry, thank you. That I think this is what it means to see properly. So they started living a life in default immediately. What happened to them? Immediately he gave it to Adam. What happened? What happened immediately? Their eyes were opened. Opened to the other end that they had to hide. No more confidence. So if you think you are looking for confidence, that's where it shows that you don't understand your identity. You don't understand who you are. You don't know God. You don't understand life. You don't understand your life. So even doing marriage well, imagine someone that does not know road, that does not understand life. He's just I'm ready for marriage. Ewa. So you are not surprised when you see a lot of marriages being hit because people perish. God's people perish for lack of knowledge. So there must be a going back to the right mind of how things should be done. Immediately when that, uh, they offended God and God said, oh, they disobeyed him. And he said, who told you you were naked? See the knowledge they borrowed. See the knowledge they got. Something that Adam said that I want you to know that whatever issue you have in marriage, God does not expect you to divorce. And he said it clearly again in the book of man. He said, I hate divorce. But Apostle Paul understood it over time, over time. And then Jesus Christ also said, in the beginning it was not. And Apostle Paul said, if you're unbelieving, because at the end of the day, if you end up with, you are not equally joked with that person, it will not work. Do you understand? That's when the unbelieving is okay, let me let you go. 
and then there will be a divorce. So you know you start your life again. Yeah, I will still teach more on that. But at, uh, at this point, when Adam, when God said, Adam, why say the woman you? A lot of us before we got married, Lord, my wife, my wife, and you are so convinced your wife, and truly she's your wife, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. And we yet to, I will still teach you on if it is truly you have that bone from heaven. <laughs> All right, but you heard it clearly. But at the end of the day, this bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh offends you. And that happened also to Adam and Eve. Yes or no? It happened to them. And he said, the woman you gave me. God did not even bother to say because of that, okay, let Eve leave. I have to create a fit for Adam. You made him disobey me. You made it, do you understand? Because at that point, they are one. Said so for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother. A lot of boys are getting married these days. And they say they are men. They will even do men in Agbada. The, the boys to men. I shall be men. Ladies in waiting. Bridesmaids with no understanding of marriage. But they are good wedding planners. You take time to plan your wedding, but you don't plan your marriage. I always recommend couples intending couples to do therapy. Therapy in the sense that there is a mindset shift of certain things of how you look at life, how you resolve issues and all of that. So you don't keep running for pillar to post. So I submit to you today that most times the way you do marriage is like if I had stayed without glasses and I cannot see well, that is what is happening. So you say, oh, Pastor, I understand the situation. You don't even understand because your understanding is not standing. Do you get it? So you cannot conclude on your, on your decisions because your perspective is not clear enough. I want us to do something right now. Maybe you have marriages that are about to hit the rock. Or you know you are the one that is even still running in error. Help me to understand marriage. Marriage is beautiful. Some people are so much, they are so afraid of it. Ah! My mother was hurt, my dad was, I don't want what happened to my parents. To to the only way that it will not happen to you is to embrace knowledge. And the true knowledge, the right one, discarding it. You are training your children and say, that's how I was brought up. Who taught you that's the best way? Because the people who did it, they needed help too. Because they had borrowed glasses too. And from generation to generation, we are running in error. Your wife cannot talk to you because you are the lion of the tribe of the house. Once daddy comes, everybody, all keke, barriers, everybody run it, it, I make I dodge bullet too. Mommy is coming. Who mm? no fear mother? No get shame. You are not that. You are a loving parent. You are a caring one. You are one who will sit and pray for your children and understand the kind of arrow they are. In the, he said, as, as they are, they are arrows in the, what? in the hand of a mighty, you are a mighty warrior. And a mighty warrior is not a lazy one. You can't afford to always put the blame game on your spouse or even on yourself. Some people want to be kind. They say, I know I caused it. Stop it. Stop causing it too. Stop blaming yourself. It's because you don't know. But now you know. That forgiveness and all the fruit of the Spirit, as Pastor Tolu taught, will be tested. Will you still be joyful even when your partner hurts you? Will you still love? Will you still suffer long? Will you still be found faithful even when he or she denies you when you needed it the most? And you think that you, you will die if you don't have it. But at the end of the day, you didn't have it, you didn't die. Is it hard for you to know that it's just for the moment? You still not pick the wisdom there. You say, ah, she's denying me. I have a reason to step out. You trespass. And he said, he that bites the edge. Serpents will bite. 
So things start happening to your finances, start happening to certain things you don't know. You don't even have to do it. The moment you begin to entertain the thought in your heart. So it's a hard work this morning about marriages. Are you with me? Do not entertain lust. Do not entertain malice. Do not entertain grudge. Because over time, if you keep saying, let me brush over, let me brush over, I'll, see, resolve your issues before you go to bed so that you sleep well. I don't know where, I, I can't sleep. In fact, I would just open my eyes, I'll be tossing to and crying. Get up and say the um. Do you understand? You don't have to um, um, um everywhere. I have to talk. But some people are so angry. They say, why will you wake me? In the, you know, all, all the people that used to say, I'm, for, I'm here for the comments. You know yourself, when they post one, you say, I'm here for you. Now see it, you'll be strolling and scrolling. Why you say you are here for the comments? You are imbibing people's ideologies. I hope you know. You must have your own ideology about that issue. Because if you don't, you have imprinted it on your heart, and before you know it, you replicate it. Hallelujah, I need to wrap up. I need to. We'll continue next week. We'll continue next week. If you have any question, please forward it. Forward it, forward it, forward it. God bless you.